So welcome to the video lecture series on theory of computation. So we will be discussing about uh, theory of computation and mathematical preliminaries today. So now what is meant by theory of computation? So theory of computation, theory of computation is a study, is a study of mathematical models. Theory of computation is a study of mathematical models. So when we understand what is meant by mathematical model, this mathematical models, anything in real time scenario is called as a mathematical model. Say for example, when you switch on a light in a room, that is considered as a mathematical model. So because it operates on two different states called as on and off. Whenever uh, you try to uh, write something in your notebook, we can say it is a mathematical model because what you can do with your pen, either you can write or you cannot write it. So these are the two states. So uh, whenever there is an operation, an off, uh, off operation, then we can say it is called as a mathematical model. So theory of computation is a study of mathematical models. There are various different mathematical models. So uh, we'll be learning about finite state model, finite state model, then push down automata, push down automata, and the third one we learn about Turing machines. So these are some of the mathematical models we used to come across. So uh, to understand theory of computation, we have to understand first what is meant by mathematical preliminaries. So we'll be learning about mathematical mathematical preliminaries. Mathematical preliminaries. So, mathematical preliminaries, the first concept we will be going to learn about the concept called as sets. So, sets. Sets are actually a collection of elements. For example, you can say sets are collection of elements or it is also called as collection of objects. So these are the two things. Either you can say it is elements, collection of elements or objects. But to identify, to write down the set. So how will you define a set or how will you represent a set in real time scenario? So mathematically how to represent a set. Let us assume that we have a set name called as A. A equal to, I can write like this. So 1, comma 2, comma 3. So I can say that A is a set which consists of three elements 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2 and 3 are called as elements or objects. And uh, let us assume that I write another set called as B equal to A, B, C. So my set B consist of let us assume that since set name is b we have, we have an element also b so we'll just name it as b1 so we have three elements a b1 and c inside the set called as b but how will you represent whether an element belongs to a set or not for example a set a consists of 1 comma 2 comma 3 now how to represent the element 2 which belongs to A here. How to represent that 2 is part of the set A. So since 2 is inside you can write like this 2 belongs to A. And if you take up the first set there is not any element called as 10. 10 is not there and now how to represent that 10 does not belong to A. So you can directly write like this 10 does not belong to you just take it off and write a that means this shows that 10 does not belong to a here 
So a set is a collection of elements or objects. And uh, we'll be discussing about what are the various operations in a set. So operations in a set. So we'll be uh, learning about the operations in set is called as union. Number two, intersection. And number three, it is difference. And number four, it is complement. So these are the basic operations which can be performed by a set. So now we will discuss about what is meant by union. So union is, uh, we can be doing union with the help of two sets. Suppose if A is a set and B is also a set and if B is also a set then A union B contains then A union B contains elements in either either in A or in B. That means whenever you perform union operation you can the resultant uh, set will consist of the values either in A or it will be in B. Now we will go for an example. So example, so A equal to, you can write that 1 comma 3 and B equal to 2 comma 4. Now when I try to do this, A union B and uh, the result of the operation is A union B and uh, answer will be 1, 2, 3 and 4. So all the unique elements inside both the sets you have to write it. But understand one thing, a set will not have duplicate elements. So you make a note, set will not have, will not have duplicate elements. That means, if you try to write a set like this, so A tends to 2, 3, 1, 2, 5, then this is not called as a set. Because the element 2 exists more than one time over here. So since that is a duplicate element, so this is not considered as a set here. But how will you define a set mathematically? Union operation. How will you define an union operation mathematically? So you have uh, come across an example for union. Now, now to write union, let us assume that we found, uh, let us assume that we have elements A equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 that is A union B A union B has sets called as 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 so I will write it clearly A union B equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 but the problem is given as A equal to 1 comma 3 and B equal to 2 comma 4 now, how to write it mathematically? Let us assume that A union B has taken as a whole called as X here. Let us take all these values as X here. Now, A union B can be mathematically written as X, that is capital X, and this X either belongs to A or B. So, I write like this X belongs to A or B x belongs to b 
So this is the way how to write a union operation with the help of mathematical definitions. Now the next is called as intersection. So intersection if A and B are sets then A intersection B will give only the common elements only the common elements only the common elements in A and B only the common elements in A and B so uh, let us assume that A equal to 1 comma 3 and B equal to 4 comma 5 comma 3 there are two elements now when I try to two sets when I try to find A union B then the common element between set A and B is only 3 so the answer is 3 but uh, how will you define mathematically? So, you can directly write like this. So, A union B. Let us assume that this 3 is called as X here. So, I can write like this. X bar where X belongs to A and now this word is very much important. X belongs to B here. These are the two options. That means uh, the corresponding value x should belong both to A and B. If that is the case, then it will be included inside the set for A intersection B. The next is called as the difference. So difference, if a and B are sets then A minus B is called as difference difference now what is A minus B here let us assume that A equal to 1 comma 3 comma 5 and B equal to 5 comma 6 comma 7 and when you take it up a minus b you have to see what are the elements in a which is not in b that is the result of a minus b you have to see what are the elements in a which is not in b if you take it out the elements which is not in b is actually 1 and 3 but 5 already exists in b here so 5 5 goes off and you have to write only the remaining elements which exist in a so the answer is a minus b is equal to 1 comma 3. Suppose if the case is given as b minus a, you have to see only the elements in b which is not existing in a. So b minus a, so the elements which is not existing in a is actually 6 and 7. So we have to write it as 6 and 7. Now how to define this mathematically? So I can write like this. A minus B is equal to. So you have to see only A here. So let us assume that A minus B is considered as X here. So X. So X tends to A. And X does not belong to B. So this is the category. You have to define mathematically like this. And the next operation is called as complement. So complement, uh, you will have a universal set. So universal set, let us assume that universal set called as U. So universal set u is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma up to 10. Let us assume that there are 10 numbers in universal set and I write like this a equal to 2, 4, 6 and 8. Now 
if you want to find a complement of set A, what are all the numbers which does not exist in A but which exist in U should be considered into count, should be taken into account. So, complement of A, you have to put A bar, it's called as complement of A, you have to see the numbers which does not exist in A at the same time which exist in U. So, U have carries the values from 1 to 10 but uh, A has 2, 4, 6 and 8. So, remaining all values are called as the complement values. So, the answer is 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9 and 10. So, this is called as complement of A. So, Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day.